Hey, we found a winner in today's market. It's another one that we talked about in the quantum world uh, just recently. Uh, George Tillis joins me for a look at QUBT again. Uh, this is interesting today, George, because uh, Andrew left at Citron, the short uh, shop, uh, posted on X that small cap quantum stocks are in a bubble, but QUBT stands out as the most ridiculous. So I guess uh, he just doesn't make a splash the way he used to. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, look, Stocks uh, up 50%. I have to agree with his analysis. Yeah, I have to agree with his analysis, and I'll explain in a sec. But, you know, obviously there's uh, huge amounts of uh, speculative fervor moving into the quantum computing space. And, and of course, you know, looking at Google, um, I think their technologies are real, and IBM are big players in this, uh, in this parallel, what's called parallel technology, maybe even of course, advanced technologies beyond artificial intelligence. So let's keep that aside. But if you consider QUBT, um, this company essentially is um, is now a $3 billion company uh, based out of New Jersey with 44 employees. Now they do uh, you know, have a ra random number generator based on what they've told us in terms of their uh, technologies. These are again, cryptographic kinds of technologies um, some say that they're able to eventually crack the code of the blockchain uh, themselves. But again, that's for another day altogether. But if you look at what's going on in this space, um, there's a lot of bidding up of names, particularly names that are smaller in market cap. And so I think we talked about Rigotti, um, uh, RGTI. And if you look at QMCO, Quantum Corp, uh, those two names happen to be of a smaller market cap um, relative to sales. But if you look at QUBT, uh, this particular stock is at a $3 billion market cap, and um, their top-line sales last year were $400,000. Uh, so they lost $24 million on $400,000 in sales, which is tremendous. And so, uh, you know, looking at Citron's call, you know, I think, it, I think it's meritorious based upon looking at comparisons to other names out there, which are all moving, by the way, you know, exorbitantly to the upside based on you know, uh, hype, if you will, there's a positive feedback loop. Uh, there's also high short interest, which this name, based on the last numbers that I have, is around 12% of the free float. Uh, and essentially, public owns the majority of the shares around 80%. Boy, um, so then how does that kind of change the way we think about trading it, George? Well, what, what impact does that have on, uh, on volatility or kind of how the stock compares to like a more household name? Well, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, you can trade anything on an intraday basis as long as there's momentum and volume. There's clearly momentum. There's clearly volume. There's clearly buyers who are bidding up prices, um, and they're they're basically meme uh, category in meme categories right now. Uh, and I think they're also tied, you know, to 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 some extent what's going on in blockchain and, of course, you know, <laughs> crypto trying. and this whole universe of tech is moving aggressively higher. So therefore, you can trade anything that's got a lot of momentum and volume, which this does, but you know, the, vol the, the, the fundamentals eventually in the long run, and that could be you know, years down the road or it could be next week, um, they, they matter. And so eventually, you know, this is gonna be a name that uh, you know, might be a household name in a couple of years, I don't know, but it's, it's right now very speculative to say the least, but it doesn't necessarily mean it can't go higher because there've been a lot of stocks out there as of late in this group that have shown just tremendous gains on a percentage basis, irrespective of any fundamentals. What I would love to see, and they're based in Leesburg, Virginia, which is close to my uh, hometown where I grew up in high school, so maybe, uh, well, kind of close, not really. Maybe I'll go uh, uh, have somebody knock on the doors and stuff, because it's hard to know kind of what's hype and what's not. It kind of reminds me of blockchain stuff to a certain degree. Remember we had like Long Island? Uh, blockchain and stuff like Long Island Tea Company and whatnot, um, yeah. and I'm, I, I don't know if it's anything like that. But I just wonder, like, how how, how readily available all their devices are, and uh, kind of what um, uh, like orders they have. Well, because obviously, like, when you look at the um, financials, I mean, there's there's meager to none really on, on record. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to bash any company, and I don't, I'm not bashing speculators either. I speculate all the time, and so there's nothing wrong with that. It's, 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 it's fun. It's, it can be lucrative. Uh, so, with that said, you know, one of the things you'll notice there is some news on the company. They, they did, uh, based on what they've said, they've generated a NASA contract um, for random generation of imaging, which will improve imaging efficiency. This is again what the news is reporting. 
Uh, but there's no details. I mean, how much is the contract? What's the longevity, the duration, et cetera? So without details, it's, you know, it could be speculative altogether. I don't know. Mm. Uh, but nonetheless, it could be, you know, something that's very substantive that is meaningful for the long run growth of the revenues and eventual earnings for the business. But right yeah. now, the price is moving first and there's a lot of speculation behind it. Uh, and again, um, it doesn't necessarily mean it will stop tomorrow because once you get into this positive feedback loop of prices higher, covers, you know, oh, yeah. you know, stock halts and so forth, I didn't check to see if there's options traded. And if there's no options traded, this thing could actually continue quite uh, quite substantially. Oh, yeah, no, there's options traded. Because baby. there isn't a... <laughs> there's options Okay, traded. well, then there is a mechanism to offset. Yeah, so there's a mechanism to basically sell short or, or to use a proxy for – uh, being bearish uh, against it, and I don't know if there's any yeah, short, uh, you know, shares available for short. So the no. bottom line is, uh, just just be ready for a secondary offering if you're going to play this game. Okay, uh, short interest right now is 15.5% of float. So uh, Andrew left Citron not alone. All right, we got jump. Thanks, GT.